Hello everyone and welcome back to episode 7 of our inventory system series. In previous episode we worked on our widgets for our inventory grids and their slots. In this episode we're going to now apply these widgets to our screen so we can display them with a key press and show the contents of our inventory. So let's get started and jump straight in. Okay, so now we've got some of the legwork done for our widgets for our UI. We now need to make it so we actually show it on the screen. So for that, we're actually going to make our own pl custom player controller. So if we go to our content draw down here, and let's go into our, I'm put in my with my player character here. We're going to make a new blueprint class, and we're going to create a new player controller. I'm going to call it my player controller, but obviously you should have your own really if you're making your own game already. You should already have your own player controller. Just make sure you use that one. And inside of here, we're going to set up the inputs to allow us to show our inventory. So for this, we're going to set up an input action on our project settings. Let's go into there, put input, and we're going to add new action mapping for inventory. And for that, we're going to do the I key. Okay. And for gamepad controls, we're going to put in the special right button, which is like the start button there. Okay. So now we've got that in there, we're now going to right click and search for our inventory input action event. There it is. So now we've got this, we can now call our UI to show on the screen. Now for this to work, we need a player menu or player HUD to show this, okay? We're going to do it this method. So let's go and create a generic player HUD. This is the thing that we're going to just show stuff on the screen to the player the whole entire time. And we'll be doing this again in a minute with the display message type stuff, but Right now, all we need to do is create a new user interface widget. And we call this one player HUD. And it's going to be empty by default. Okay, so that's all we need. So back on our player controller here, we're going to go on begin play. And we're going to create widget. And we're going to create our player HUD. And we're going to promote that to a variable there. Call it HUD. And add this to the viewport. Now you can also do this in the HUD class too if you're using a HUD class. That's totally up to you, but that is down to your own game and its design. So now we need to create a function in our player HUD to show our inventory. So let's go over to our player HUD widget here. In our player HUD here, we're going to uh, just simply just put in a canvas panel that we can use for anything later on. Canvas panel right there. And we're then going to go to the graph over here. Now on the graph, we're going to create a custom event to display player menu. And this is going to be quite simple. All it's going to do is going to create the widget for the player menu. And then we're going to promote it to a variable. Now, what I don't want to do is just promote it just to a plain old variable like you would do like so. Um, because the issue with that is I want this to also be in tandem with the container later on. So if I just change this to a generic user widget object rather than the specific M, uh, the player menu and ch so type in here, user widget and click, yep, change. We're not really calling anything specific on it. So it's just gonna be really useful for us to remove things later on, but they can both be assigned to the same variable. And uh, so here I'm going to do add to viewport there. Okay, so display player menu. Okay. So once we've got that, we're then going to go back to our player controller. And when I push the inventory key here, we're going to take our HUD class, uh, HUD widget reference here, and call that display player menu function. Yeah. Hit compile. And then we're going to just assign our player controller to our game mode. So let's go into finding our game mode. And we're going to go into the player controller class and set that to my player controller. So now if I push play and over here push the I key, we see our widgets come up. Okay. Now when I push I again, you can see it's going to keep on coming up and up and up and up. That's because I haven't changed the game mode input mode to anything apart from just game only. So I need to make it so it's input only and stops the player moving around doing stuff. So for that, we're going to go into our player menu. So let's go to our 
inventory system folder UI player menu okay so on the construct event we're going to get the player controller and we need to change its input mode so set input mode to UI only and we're going to set the widget to focus going to be the inventory grid that'll be useful for later on when we do controller support and then we're going to also make it so it shows the mouse cursor so from the player controller again drag out and do set show mouse cursor that's so we can actually just see the damn mouse on the screen when we're trying to pick up stuff um and that's what we need to do here and then what we need to do is set it back to um the game only mode when we destroy this widget so create a new customer not custom event so search for another event called destruct and basically the opposite of construct um so we get the player controller here set input mode to game only and then do set show mouse cursor to false okay um one thing to note though, you probably will get, if you do like this, you'll probably get some errors every time you close out the game. Uh, and that's because when you close the game, this is going to be destroyed bef after the player controller has been destroyed already. So this will return false here. So to stop those errors becoming annoying, just drag out there and just do an is valid check. Like so. Okay. Okay, so once we've got that in there, uh, we don't need to make it so we can actually push the key again to return back. And we have to do that inside of our widget here. So go to the functions on the left here and go to override. And we're going to do on key down. And on key down, we're going to get the key event and get the key that's being pushed. And then we're going to compare this to the two entry types we could have. We've got the I key. Or... We've also got the gamepad special right button. And this will be an or. Either can do this one. Those. And that'll go into a branch there. Like so. And if that's true, we're going to do remove from parent. Plug that in and we're going to make this handled. And there we go. Hit compile and save. So now we should be able to receive these inputs. Now, the only reason why we wouldn't be able to receive these inputs is if we don't have it set to focus ball. So before we go anywhere else, we're going to go back to designer view, go to where it says at the top here player menu, and I'm going to go to the right hand side and tick the is focus ball button. Now, I'm also going to add an extra thing on here and make my inventory slots have a little bit of padding around them by default so if I go find my inventory slots uh, here go again to the top here inventory slot and this one will also be focusable as well so I might as well tick that whilst we're here and I'm going to go to where it says padding and add a padding of uh, 5 for now I may increase that later there we go and hit compile and save right so now we we'll go back into our game and test that out so here, if I push I, it comes up, and I push I again, it goes away, and I've got control back. Okay. So now if I go pick up this apple, and push I again, there's that apple there appearing on the screen. And you can see there we've got the quantity as well showing as such as well. And to show that works in uh, the client view as well, we've got, oh, wrong button. There you go. If I go pick up the item, I, and there it is. Okay. And there we go. We've now got our inventory grid showing on the screen. No way to manage it just yet, but it's there showing and displaying as correctly as it should be. And there we go. We've now got our inventory widgets showing on the screen as intended. In the next episode, we're going to start work on our drag and drop functionality by designing the widgets for those and getting those to appear on the screen. You can watch that in the next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley, where all patrons get access to all my videos early before everyone else. 
Thank you to everyone who is supporting me over on Patreon and on YouTube members. It really means everything, so thank you again so much. If you're watching this and you're not yet subscribed, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you next time. Bye, everyone.